Hello guys and welcome back to In The Fishing Room. Another busy week for me. Um, I was out with Lee Kerry, a little video up there for the Press Innovations channel. Um, I did a little teaser up here, I'll put a link up here. But also there'll be a video coming maybe Friday this week, so which will be tomorrow, uh, on the Press Innovations YouTube channel. So subscribe to that, it'll be like a 50 minute video, so a really good one to get your teeth into, so check that out. I must say, it's, it's really surprised me how people are enjoying this sort of in the tackle room style video. Um, it's, you know, it's nice, it's good really, because it's, you know, I can do these like regularly. Every time I'm working from home, I can do one if there's something on my mind or, you know, an event I've been to or something like that. So keep liking it, keep giving me a thumbs up. And if, if you know, if they keep getting the response that they are getting, then I'll keep doing them. So thanks guys. Don't forget to subscribe. It really helps. Now, as... The viewers from last week will have noticed I was preparing for the Silverfish final. The, uh, it's an Angling Trust and Catchmore Media event. Um, the first year it has ran, qualified for the final from Packington Summers, and uh, I was all, you know, raring to go for the final. Now, unfortunately, just due to one thing or another, I just couldn't get out and practice. Um, just had so much on with the big one shows and things like that recently that I just didn't have time to go at the weekend, so which is a shame, but I have fished with Holcroft all winter albeit with a feeder, but I, I felt like I had a bit of an idea of the, of the venue, how it was fishing, like the pegs you need to be on and stuff like that. Plus, I had some amazing information, um, did a bit of phone practicing, if you like. Um, Matt Godfrey, James Dent, Nicky Crooks, Tom Scully, all really helped me out with information. They've been going there all the time this winter, and thanks guys, you know, your information was great, gratefully accepted, and it put me on the right track. This was um, an interesting one because Bloodworm and Joker was allowed, which it hasn't been allowed on my feeder matches, but I know from previous experience how good Bloodworm and Joker is there. So obviously I'm of that, I've been brought up fishing Bloodworm and Joker with my team events for Barnsley Blacks and Gabley and Owasset back in the day. Um, so every time it is allowed, it has to figure into my plan, it just has to, it's just the way I'm brought up. So ultimately my plan was to fish um, a combination of Bloodworm tactics, I was hoping to catch on casters short, and then pellets as well. Um, and I was sort of live by the sword, die by the sword kind of thing. That was that was how I was going to fish. Um, I drew peg 16 on Bridge Island, which is a great peg. Um, Bridge hasn't been fishing great recently, but I know that that peg and that little area there is fantastic. So I was really happy with my draw and I had loads of room. Um, I put a little video on just showing you how much room I had. Um, and it looked fantastic. The only thing that was bugging me a little bit was the wind. It was quite strong, blowing from right to left. Um, but nevertheless, it looked fantastic. I really liked it. Um, and I fished quite, quite simple, I suppose. I, I didn't, I didn't set my feeder rod up. I just didn't bother. Um, I had a line to my right with pellets at 13 meters, and I had a line to my left at 13 meters where I fed Bloodworm and Joker in ground bait. I fed um, the Thatcher's Dark and F1 Dark combination that you saw. I did a bit of damp lean to that. Um, and one thing I also did, because that mix breaks down really quickly, I actually added uh, Bonoffi Bait Booster. Now this is a really sticky liquid, um, really sugary sweet liquid. And I just added a drizzle of that and it really helped my mix bind. Um, a lot of people might think I'm just plugging like sponsors products, but it actually genuinely does alter the, the way the action, you know, the action of the ground bait. It also makes it really inert on the bottom. And it definitely worked. I did loads of tank tests in my garden when I was you know, preparing for the event. And that, it totally changed the action of the ground bait. So that's something I'm going to experiment with a lot more in the future. Um, and the third line I fished was where I intended to, you know, to do most of my damage really was five meters. Um, the peg looked fantastic to the left. So I actually angled my five meters from to the left, just on the slope. Um, it slopes away. It's quite a deep hole craft for a commercial fishery. Um, and it just sloped off and I fished there. Um, I actually put three balls laced with casters and joker. I really went for it on that line. And then my plan was to sort of loose feed up to two pints of casters throughout the day over the top um, and try and dominate that. Now, the spanner in the works was I had Andy May on peg 20, which although he was four pegs away, around the corner a little bit, he um, he was gonna go down a simple route of pellet fishing. Um, obviously it's hit what him and uh, Jamie Hughes do so well, pellet fishing. So I was always, you know, I had him out the corner of my eye and I was really con really conscious that he may dominate the area of pellets if that was the bait that they wanted. Um, and so it proved, um, but more of that later. Anyway, my match kicked off brilliant. Um, I'd been tipped off by James Dent that for pellets there, you do not need to feed much bait at all. So I just tapped in literally 10 micro pellets at the start, 
before feeding three lines of um, joker and casters long and three balls short. I actually fed a little, le little bit less joker long because I wanted to go on it you know, after sort of 20 minutes really. Um, the short line I fully intended to leave alone for a couple of hours. So I was you know, happier to put in a bigger bed of bait joker wise there. Um, hoping that the fish would come onto it. Um, and I set off on the pellets, having fed me little, you know, little pinch of micros. And um, a lot of people told me that you could have to wait half an hour for bites, three quarters an hour, maybe even up to an hour for bites. So imagine my surprise when I loaded my F1 pellet in and it just carried on going. I got on a pound straight away, within seconds. Um, a, a wonderful start, really. And uh, I was hoping that that would sort of set the tone for the day. Um, my next fish took about another five minutes to come and it, the pellets was quite, it was ticking over nicely but I never felt like I was really getting anywhere with it. Um, I was just sort of ticking over really, catching an odd fish um, and I was itching to get on Bloodworm and Joker, I have to be honest. Um, it was ringing in my ears something that Nicky Crook said to me, he said if you've got eight pound halfway through you, you put yourself in a great position because that short line will come good late and uh, that was ringing through my head, I was like can I get to eight to ten pound? Well. When I dropped in on my bloodworm line, there was fish there straight away. Only small fish, like little skimmers like this, an odd better one, an odd roach, but it was nice fishing. I was just ticking along nicely. And I, with that information in my head of the eight pound to 10 pound sort of uh, goal for the halfway stage, I was heading towards that no problem at all. I was catching really well. And then um, after two hours, I comfortably had that in the net, probably a bit more, 10, 11 pound. I was catching quite nicely, just alternating between pellets and, and bloodworm. What was interesting, was when I rested a line, I didn't even top it up. Um, it just didn't seem like the fish were responding to any bait, if I'm honest. So what I was doing, I was catching my fish. Um, every time I dropped on a new line, the first fish would be a decent one. So what I was doing, I was catching my decent fish, then catching six or seven of the smaller ones before just resting it, not feeding it, just resting it, and then moving on to pellets and vice versa. And that worked really well. It got me sort of, like I say, to double figures after two hours sort of thing so I was really like comfortable with that Andy was struggling at that point he had five fish uh, and the lads opposite were similar to me really we were all getting a few bites but we were all fishing sort of blood worm and baits like that so um and this is where my match started to unravel a little bit because I was well happy with how things were going I was fully aware that moat pool would probably take the win and um, the fish are just that bit you know there's a few more fish in there and they're a bit bigger um, but I was hoping that I could get in the frame and uh, that, you know, that was sort of the goal. And I think they paid top four on the day. So I've gone like through this and I was itching to have a go short and uh, I'd fed it for two hours, loose feeding casters by hand, nice and accurate, as, you know, as accurate as I could, plus those original three balls. Um, and I went in with single caster and my float just buried and I got a pound skimmer straight away. I was like oh my god this is going to happen this is going to be my day and i caught three as quickly as my float would settle i was using a 4 before inky ante and it was i strung my shots out and I, as soon as it settled it just carried on going it went three and three chucks as fast as i could fish and i really thought here we go i've got a chance here and then on my fourth chuck it didn't happen nothing happened and then my fifth chuck i caught a little roach i was like no problem i'll top it up i actually topped up with ground bait and carried on and just carried on plodding along on my, on my long line and this is where my match kind of unraveled a bit because this is when Andy started catching on pellets short um, he decided to fish two lines short interestingly with micro pellets and, and expanders on the hook and he started catching really well like really well he was catching one a clod decent skimmers not massive fish but pound skimmers and he was you know how fast Andy May is at catching fish he's like a machine and uh, I couldn't help but get drawn in and it was a bit foolish of me really because my two long lines were reliable and I was catching fish off them, albeit smaller fish, but those little skimmers, those that you can just about swing in, should net them really, but you can just about swing them in, they're weight builders they are and I, I should know better because I've caught them fish so many times before, they're them fish where you don't catch hardly any all match and you lift out and you've got 20 pound of them, they're just nice heavy fish. And I could catch them one a chuck on my two long lines but because of how well Andy was catching, and obviously I'm trying to win £4,000, you know, I've got to like try and push the peg. And I really got drawn into my short line thinking it'd come good. And the more I tried it, the worse it got. I was just catching roach and I just really lost my way because then I was caught between a, a rock and a hard place really because every time I went long, I could catch these little skimmers and 
I was like, should I carry on doing that or should I go short? And I got caught in, I got stuck in the mud really. And it's my own fault. Um, Andy was bagging and he just kept on bagging. And, and I really tried to chase him on my short line. It just wasn't happening. I tried to open a pellet line up short, but the wind was bad where I fished it. And it was just, that was a poor decision that was. I shouldn't have even think, thought about that. But it was kind of a reactionary thing. I, I, I was a bit, bit upset with myself on the way home with that one. Anyway, I just plodded along and then the last hour was really poor. Um, I just couldn't, I'd lost my long lines by then because I was trying to force my short line and, I, and my long lines, I just hadn't fed them properly. I, you know, I had topped them up and oh, just a bit of a nightmare. So with half an hour to go, I, I thought, right, I've got to just go for it now on the short line. The fish do rock up late on bridge and ultimately it was Andy kind of booked the trend really because he caught short early, you know, with two hours to go. Yeah, that was that was unusual, should we say? That's that's not how it normally works there. But I'm fully aware that you can, you can catch ten pound in ten minutes there. That's just how it is. And uh, sure enough, fifteen minutes to go. Adrian Niggin bottom on the other bank kept saying, "Joe, they'll come, they'll come. They they always come late." Sure enough, fifteen minutes to go. Single caster. I didn't change anything. Went in with a single caster. Wallop two pounder. Wow. I mean, uh, you know, here we go. Went in, I caught five in five chucks, two pounders, so I caught another 10 pound in, in five casts, which just shows how important that short line is. And it just, I, I, in my head, I thought casters was the wrong bait, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe there just, there just wasn't the amount of fish there. Maybe I needed to fish pellets at 10 meters and, and draw the fish in, something like that. It's one of them we'll never know. Um, you know, when, like I say, when the fish were there, they were really easy to catch on casters. Um, and when there weren't, I just couldn't get any bites. So one of those, I ended up with 28 pound, which got the section. So 60 quid for my troubles. But Andy had a, a fantastic 41 pound. I thought he had more than that, to be honest. He put a second net in with an hour to go. Um, and I think there's a 70 pound net limit. So I really sort of thought, oh, here we go. But, you know, he had a slow start and that probably caught him up in the end. Um, as predicted, Moat Pool on the island in, in the 40s, uh, you know, did the damage. Uh, Mick Brownell, venue regular, did a fantastic job. He had £51, narrowly beating the venue expert, Andy Oldham, off the next peg, who had £48. I mean, that, what, a, what a battle that is. You know, they've both caught fish all day long on pellets. Um, brilliant. And to see Mick win that, four grand, brilliant result. Well done, mate. Um, I don't know if you're watching, but if you are, well done. Great, great job. Lovely chap. Well done, mate. Um, Andy ended up third, so he got, you know, a decent payout for his troubles. Um, and I could see he was disappointed not to win, but he did brilliant. To catch £41 in two hours of those skimmers, you know, they weren't big fish. He's just a machine. It was a, it, I, obviously, I didn't watch him, but I could see him out the corner of my eye, and he's just a machine when he's on fish and frightening, frightening angler. But that's it. That, that was the Silverfish final. A few regrets, really. I probably shouldn't have bothered with Bloodworm and Joker. Um, it was probably the wrong choice on the day. Maybe a little bit negative looking back. Not negative in... Um, a fishing sense, you're always going to catch loads of fish, but what I mean is I probably didn't give myself the best chance of catching £50, which I was... <sighs> it's hard really because two days prior, me and Lee had been to Bank End to film the latest video for Press Innovations and the fishing was difficult. You know, he caught a nice net of fish, 15, 16 pound of skimmers and roach, but for that venue it was difficult. Uh, and a lot of lads practiced on the Friday. Um, and it was difficult then too. So I really sort of felt that if I could catch 30 pound, 30 to 35 pound, I may not win, but I could definitely get in the frame with that. Um, and ultimately it was a bit short, of, you know, I needed to fish pellets really. I probably should have fished two pellet lines long and probably pellets short as well. But there you go, there you live and learn. I'll know, for, you know, know better for next time. This is what fishing's all about, isn't it? You've got to learn from your mistakes. Um, they're not losses, they're lessons. That's what the fighters say, isn't it? But um, yeah, I had a great day. It was just brilliant. The, the weather was nice. Um, it was lovely and mild. I sat in a hoodie all day. No coats, no fleeces. Um, the fishing was fantastic. I had a bite of chuck all day. Um, I can't, you know, you just can't knock that really. Um, and, it was, and it was great to see an event like that so hotly contested. The venue was perfect for it. Um, it fished, it fished brilliant. There were so many twenty pound plus weights, and the, when you think there's no carp to count, um, you just can't knock that. What a brilliant job for Holcroft. I was really pleased for them guys. They put a lot of work in and to see that venue, you know, throw up with good weights and a great final, you know, brilliant job. 
So that's it for my little roundup of the Silverfish final. Not to be. Got myself a little envelope, but not the one I hoped for. But there you go, that's fishing. Um, I've got another busy week this week. I was out with Match Fishing Magazine yesterday. You know, that was my old job. And Dan Webb, I must say, is taking on the editorial ship over me. Um, is doing a great job. So it was great to see him, have a catch up, have a chat, see how things are going. Um, and as always, Barston never lets you down when it comes to uh, you know doing some great stuff. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. If you've got to the, this mark, subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Leave a comment below, uh, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.